PR Connections Radio presents. Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here in the sports and entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. And follow our social media and follow all the show's social media at PR Connections Radio and at Vegas Hockey Hub. And I'm very excited to announce my guest for this episode of Vegas Hockey Hub. And that is the person who has created PR Connections Radio, the guy who helped uh, create this show. Of course, Guy Dawson. Welcome to the show. How's it going, my friend? Uh, Everything's going great, Ian. Thanks. It's been a while uh, since I've been uh, a guest on one of your shows. I always appreciate the opportunity to to come by and uh, support you. Uh, You've done so much to support our network. Really appreciate you inviting me. Yeah, so the uh, last time that we had you on here was actually during the uh, Marathon show. You uh, were talking about Aiden Hill being re-extended. Of course, he did. He is back here in Vegas. So that's absolutely fantastic news. And speaking of the Vegas Golden Knights, them winning the Stanley Cup, them winning a championship, and with both of us being here in Las Vegas, being in the sports and entertainment capital of the world, Um, How did the championship feel on your end, seeing the Vegas Golden Knights, seeing a team that was born here in Las Vegas six years in, finally winning a championship? Yeah, just like so many other people here in Vegas, Ian, I just was absolutely thrilled. I had the opportunity to watch the Knights play quite a few times throughout the season. And I mean, they were... They were sharp all year. I mean, I wasn't sure if they were going to be good enough to win the the Stanley Cup. There was a lot of great teams in hockey. But when I would watch them, they were pretty much always the best team on the ice every time that I watched them. You know, all teams have their nights when they're not their sharpest, but they definitely showed the potential to be able to win the Stanley Cup throughout the season and then for them to close out so well. And, I mean, they were really dominant in the playoffs. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was huge for this town. We had this homegrown team, uh, as you mentioned, that Vegas has really embraced the Knights. Uh, and not that we haven't embraced the other sports teams. Of course, we had the Aces. But as you had mentioned, a homegrown team is really brings something special. Uh, it, is, it is a very special year uh, in Las Vegas, having a team in a major sport to win a championship. And I love that you bring up that aspect of it because, yes, the Oakland Athletics, they are potentially moving to Las Vegas. There's talk about NBA expansion, them getting an NBA expansion team. We obviously know about the Las Vegas Raiders and what they've done in their almost four seasons being here in Las Vegas. But with the Vegas Golden Knights, I've always felt, and maybe I'll have you uh, see what your opinion on opinion on it is as well. But when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights, it always felt like this is our team. You know, for the Vegas locals, for the people who are born and raised here, the Raiders, they came from Oakland. The Las Vegas Aces, they came from San Antonio. Of course, the A's are coming from Oakland as well. But it just feels like the Vegas Golden Knights are actually our team. So if you're a local, if you're someone who was born and raised here, the Golden Knights are someone you can kind of relate to you can kind of, you know, uh, build a foundation on. Right. Yeah. There's just something about a team being a part of the community. Of course, we know the the first year uh, that they started competing, uh, we had some difficult times here in Vegas. And this hockey team was something that we all had to hold on to. And they were so successful. And just the excitement, just that first year, uh, it was just electric. And so, and then they've been successful pretty much every year that they've uh, been in existence. They've really become a part of the fabric of this town. And I think that to have them uh, perform at such a high level, being a relatively new team, as you know, Ian, uh, being a, a real sports aficionado, it usually takes a lot of years for a team, an expansion team at that to win a championship. I don't know if I ever remember an expansion team that I can remember winning a championship as quickly as the Vegas Knights have done. So the only one that I would say is kind of similar is the Arizona Diamondbacks in baseball. Uh, They debuted in 1998, won a championship in 2001. 
Now, the, I will say they are a notable exception. Because the Arizona Diamondbacks and went and got a Cy Young and future Hall of Famer in Randy Johnson. So, I, I mean, that. in a similar, now I remember. I mean, they went out and got Hall of Famers and got future and got All Stars. So, I will say when it comes to Vegas Golden Knights, I love what they did, you know, building from within, you know, having a, a misfit mentality. I even mentioned that some of the players they have acquired the past couple of years still fit that misfit mentality of, all right, you didn't want me on your team. Now I'm going to come to Vegas and I'm going to show you why it was a mistake letting me go. And when it comes to that misfit mentality, I've always felt like that's sort of Vegas as well. You know, probably people here in Vegas, we are kind of a transient city. We come from other places. So how does that kind of uh, correlate to you? The fact that you had the misfits, you had the expansion draft, you had all these players were taken from other teams, and now they kind of have branded together and have kind of become this one all-in-one kind of situation. Right. As you had mentioned, they do fit our town in a lot of ways. Uh, The way that the team was created in the first place, Ian, where a lot of people who come to live in Vegas – they have a lot of reasons for why they come to live here, but definitely this is a town for fresh starts for a lot of people. And I think that the Knights um, back in their first season, they really exemplified that they were full of a bunch of players who were looking for a fresh start with this hockey team. And that was just kind of, yeah, that's why they so much belong to us. They really just exemplify us uh, the way that, they are presented even. I mean, the Vegas Knights are their show business. Uh, that that introduction from the very beginning, they worked a lot on being just so Vegas, the showgirls, the, oh yeah, they just, they've exemplified what the culture of Vegas is all about. And speaking of, I love the entertainment show they do at the beginning of each game. Regardless if it is a preseason game, regular season game, or in the Stanley Cup final, Regardless of when you see it, you can tell they put a lot of effort and a lot of heart and, t- and time and patience into building that, that pregame show to having, you know, an experience for all the fans. Regardless if you're a Golden Knights fan or if you're a visiting fan, you're going to go away feeling like you watched a show with the Golden Knights at T-Mobile Arena, at the Fortress. It really is one of a kind. So with that being said and, that being said and put into mind, When it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights, when it comes to the entertainment aspect of it, how special does that make the Golden Knights? How does it make it stand out among the other teams in the NHL when it comes to what they provide entertainment-wise to the fans? Yeah, it's a real attraction going to a Vegas Knights game on so many levels, Ian. You just, uh, I mean, the introduction is just what they're known for. I mean, that's a phenomenal experience with the video and the, the presentation. But just throughout the game, there's just this huge entertainment element. And again, it just, it exemplifies what our city is all about. And that's how I think you start to become a part of the fabric. And that's why teams that come from other cities, it's a little bit different. Again, you were talking about the Raiders and then uh, potentially the A's that, I mean, we, we embrace the fact that they're coming here. It's just that they don't have that specific connection the way that the way that T-Mobile Arena was designed for the <laughs> for the Knights to be able to, to present themselves in the way that they present themselves. Uh, just the way that they're marketed locally. It's just all about Vegas. I mean, they are the Vegas Golden Knights. I mean, they just encompass uh, what our city is all about. So, uh, I, I, and, I, and these other teams that are starting to come, we have a potential expansion team that you mentioned uh, in basketball in a couple of years. I'm looking forward to that. I've heard a lot. Uh, from the NBA recently about the fact that they are definitely considering uh, expanding to Las Vegas. So we might get an opportunity to experience this very soon again. Uh, But again, I just feel so fortunate having lived here since 1996 and seeing the, the evolution of a, of a sports oriented city. And now, you know, the crown of having the best, hockey team in the world. I mean, it's it's just phenomenal. And as we are talking about the Vegas Golden Knights here on Vegas Hockey Hub on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media, 
I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. We're here with Guy Dawson, the founder of PRConnectionsRadio.com. And the Vegas Golden Knights clearly couldn't have been founded without the most important member of the Vegas Golden Knights, and that is the owner himself, Bill Foley. And the passion he has shown for hockey and the passion he has shown for Vegas was clear and on full display when he made this infamous quote saying that it was going to be playoffs in three, championship in six. This has been kind of an amazing quote now, using hindsight, seeing that they won a championship indeed in six years. But having a guy who loves hockey and who loves the city of Las Vegas, like Bill Foley, how important is that for the Vegas Golden Knights to have an owner like that? Someone who really cares about the team, the city, and more importantly, the sport. It makes a huge difference. And when you think about some of these owners of professional sports teams, the team they own is really just another one of their assets. They have other businesses that they own and the sports team that they take on is just another asset that they uh, acquire for a financial gain generally, which is why people buy businesses. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, people are in business to make money, obviously. Uh, but as you had mentioned, the owner of the Knights, not only is this an asset for him, but it's a, something that he, it's a passion. And I think that that also oozes out of the, the way that everyone has embraced the team as a reflection of the leader. Any organization, in my opinion, is it exists in the reflection of the leader, wherever the leader is. So this guy, you know, he's the owner of the team and everyone else kind of takes on and embraces that type of a mentality. Because as you had mentioned before, you see this owner who's extremely passionate. He's very committed to bringing in good players um, to excellence. By having setting goals like that, right? Very, I mean, that's pretty high goals. Three years, playoffs, six years, Stanley Cup. I mean, this guy was all in. He was all in from the very beginning. And definitely the way that the, the players perform as a result of that and the way that the community embraces the team, it all f- flows down from the top. The leader. Where's the leader? How's the leader feeling? Where's the... Uh, the passion of the leader and uh, the Vegas Knights definitely have benefited greatly from having a guy who looks at his team more than just on a, on a balance sheet. He looks at it really for uh, he is a hockey fan, obviously someone who just loves hockey and he's fortunate enough to own an NHL team. It is something that every diehard hockey fan wishes they could do. I I wish I could say, Hey, you know, I'm a billionaire. I'm going to go spend $500 million and get myself a hockey team. I mean, obviously, that would be every hockey fan's dream. But there is an infamous photo, an iconic photo now, uh, during the championship uh, ceremony where Bill Foley, George McPhee, Kelly McCrimmon, really the three people who, who helped build Vegas in terms of being a championship team, and they're hoisting the Stanley Cup together, kind of showing that Bill Foley wanted to include not just himself, but he also wanted to show that McPhee and McCrimmon were both part of building this team and winning a championship. And that's what I respect about Bill Foley. He's a team player. He's somebody who understands that it wasn't just him. It was the entire team. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee, there's no denying that both of those guys were the general managers of the Vegas Golden Knights during the six years that led to winning a championship. And George McPhee has to get a lot of credit for building the team during the expansion draft, making the moves the first two years. But Kelly McCrimmon, the last two seasons, he has just made good move after good move after good move and kind of helped the Vegas Golden Knights get to where they are now. So what comments would you say about George McPhee and Kelly McCrimmon and the fact that those two really helped build the Vegas Golden Knights into the winners that we saw a few months ago? So we were talking a second ago, Ian, about the leader and the leader's passion and the way that the leader set goals and had high expectations for his team and really embraced that. So part of his leadership also is in the types of people that he employs. And so he's a smart guy in that he brought in other uh, what I call lieutenants 
which is what a general manager really is, his leaders, he got them as invested in his vision as he was. I mean, and that's also a really important thing is that you have to get the people who you are working with to see your vision. And they saw it. And that was all reflected in the way that they have approached uh, building this team, building and managing this team. That's what the general managers, uh, of course, coach. It's again, it's all it all trickles down. You have the leader. The leader has the vision. The leader goes to everyone and says, "Okay, here's my vision. How can we get there? And step by step, your team starts to work towards that uh, that vision. So uh, and I as you had mentioned before making sure that everybody gets credit for their contribution is also a great a sign of a great leader. Um, there are leaders out there who sometimes are more prone to wanting to take all the credit because they're the owner of the team. But when you show people who are a part of your team how much you appreciate their contributions, they want to contribute more because they feel appreciated. They feel like you're someone who is valuing them. And not just taking all the credit and saying, oh, I did it. I did it all. Uh, and we've seen leaders like that in organizations. Uh, so his whole approach, the team spirit uh, being very big about praising his lieutenants uh, and allowing them to do their jobs. That's another critical thing is, is as the owner of an organization, you, you set this vision, expectations. You start working on a system for how you're going to carry everything out. And the next thing is stepping back and letting people do their jobs, what you're paying them for, because they're experts in, in their particular field. And uh, so they are, there's a lot of components that have led to the success of the Golden Knights. Uh, the leadership on many levels uh, has also been very important. And I've always believed that when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights, yes, the owner, the scouting the general manager, president of hockey operations. Those are all very important. But I've also believed the head coach is valuable. And if you have the right head coach, if you have the best head coach that you have available, that it can help you between winning a championship and losing in the first round. And last year, about 15 months ago, the Vegas Golden Knights hired Bruce Cassidy over from the Boston Bruins. And Bruce Cassidy was a successful head coach. He did really well in Boston, brought over to Vegas on a three-year contract. A lot of people were wondering how that was going to do. Well, nine months later, he wins a championship. He's hoisting the Stanley Cup for our Vegas Golden Knights, one heck of a hire, arguably a top-five coach in the NHL. But having someone in Bruce Cassidy who came from the Boston Bruins, who went to a Stanley Cup final with Boston when they lost to St. Louis, was really important to this team. So with that being put there, when it comes to Bruce Cassidy, him being a head coach, him having almost the two decades of experience as a coach in hockey, how valuable is that to Vegas? Because you had Gerard Gallant at the beginning when they first were an expansion team. Then he got fired. They brought in Pete DeBoer. He got him to Western Conference Finals, but didn't get him back to a Stanley Cup. Now they brought in Bruce Cassidy, and he won the entire championship in year one as a head coach. Right. It's just more about the culture, Ian. There's uh, successful people make a habit of being successful. And so where you had mentioned you have a very experienced coach uh, who's already been a part of a team that's won a Stanley Cup. Success, well, there's a, there's a motivational speaker named uh, Tony Robbins. And one of the things that he talks about is that Success leaves clues. So things that successful people do, they, they've they mastered certain tactics that allow them to go on to be successful throughout their lives. So what he did, this is someone who's mastered tactics of success in hockey, and he just brought those tactics over to an environment that was already ripe and open for him to be able to bring his, his mindset, his skill set, ability to be able to work with players, ability to be able to design game plans. I mean, the, and they played hard. I mean, for, for a team to be as successful as the Vegas Knights were, ultimately winning the Stanley Cup, when I would watch them, I just was so impressed at how hard these guys played. 
And uh, you had a lot of very talented hockey players uh, on that team uh, with big reputations, but it was uh, how hard they played all the time. And that's a reflection of the coach. That's a culture, uh, a mindset that that coach has had with his other successes that he brought over and the guys bought into it. Why? It goes back to leadership again. Because of his leadership and his commitment to excellence, they bought into his 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 mindset. And again, he had the authority from having already been successful so he could prove that he knew how to do things. And they just embraced it and and his his results were outstanding. So, yeah, it was just a successful people have a way of recreating their success over and over again. We see it all the time. Now, I want to give credit to our social media at Vegas Hockey Hub because I would, did not come up with this comment. Somebody in our chat did say that uh, Kelly McCrimmon has also been known for bringing in players from his former Brandon Wheat Kings that he owned in the WHL. That is an excellent point. For anybody who doesn't know, our general manager, Kelly McCrimmon, used to own and coach the Brandon Wheat Kings of the Western Hockey League, which is a junior hockey league out there in Canada. So it is true that he used to bring up guys who played for him back in Brandon and they play the NHL here in Vegas. So that's an excellent point. And when you're talking about leadership, the fact that McCrimmon would bring in guys that he coached and he used to know back in the junior hockey. Now, as we are getting into the players itself here on Vegas hockey hub on PR connections, radio.com, the voice of new media, I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. We're here with Guy Dawson, the founder of PRConnectionsRadio.com. And uh, someone in our chat on Facebook brought this up, so I will bring this up very quickly. McCrimmon was not around in first year. Fully structured players that no one wanted, fought too old, and the Misfits were born and took the Golden Knights to a Stanley Cup. Um, You're partially there. I'm not going to criticize you. You're partially there. McCrimmon was the assistant general manager in year one. He wasn't the actual general manager, but he was an assistant. And you are right. Foley did bring in players that no one wanted, hence the misfit title. And that's a great segue into what our next topic was going to be. Of course, we know that we have still five original players left from year one on the current roster. You have Marcia So, have Theodore, you have William Carrier, Braden McNabb, and you do have William Carlson. So do you have five players who have been here since day one? How valuable is that as a team that seven years into your franchise, you still have five players left from when you first started? Yeah, it shows the steadiness, Ian. And it also shows that there is a, again, an environment and a culture that players want to be a part of, that they've wanted to continue to play for the Vegas Golden Knights. And because they could see the vision. And a lot of that is just the goals that are set and what the players are seeing. So they're seeing success year after year after year. I mean, the Knights didn't win the Stanley Cup until this past season, but you, these players could see the progress. They could see that this, this is a successful organization that's going places. They could, and that's what made them want to continue to be members of this team and to sign contracts to continue to be a part of the team. And what does that create? That creates an environment of stability. And as you're adding these new players, now you've got built-in leaders. So now it all, I mean, it all goes back to leadership. As we've been talking about, this could have been the leadership edition of Vegas Hockey Hub, Ian. The leadership edition, yes. That's really what we've been talking about, just different levels of, of the leadership. So when you've got this core of people who've been able to – gel with one another, who understand the vision of the higher leadership, and they have bought into that. As the other players start to come, now you've got these built-in leaders. So you're not constantly starting from scratch with new leaders who might not be familiar with the culture. You've got people that were raised in the culture, who've become the, the core of the team because of their experience, their um their understanding of how things work within this particular organization. So the new players come in and there is a, there's stability. And so they're able to just come in and play their roles because there's a strong foundation around them uh, that makes them feel uh, 
secure. And of course, great coach. You got just so many things have worked well for the Vegas Golden Knights uh, over the course of uh, this time since they become an organization. It's almost too good to be true. <laughs> it really is. You just don't see that this very often with new expansion uh, organizations. I know you had mentioned the Diamondbacks. I didn't even think about the fact that relatively quickly they became a uh, a World Series winner. I hadn't even thought, but yeah, expansion teams, it's usually a grind. It takes a long time for uh, them to really develop that culture and be successful, but it's just with the Vegas Golden Knights, so many things have worked well for them. And then a city, again, that had never had uh, a professional sports team before. They didn't have anything. embraced wow. it. Yeah, I mean, heck, I remember the good old days going to Orleans Arena, seeing the Las Vegas Wranglers, the W, yes. uh, the AA, uh, ECHL. Then you have McMillan's Pub right across the street. Yeah, definitely, I remember uh, Orleans Arena very fondly. However, I will say, when it comes to Vegas Golden Knights, and we have about five minutes left, I will say it has been great to see them go from year one to year six. And one of the best players on the Vegas Golden Knights, the guy who won the Con Smythe Trophy. For playoff MVP was Jonathan Marcheseau. He has really been the heart and soul of our Vegas Golden Knights since year one. However, there has been those reports that he is at the end of his contract with the Vegas Golden Knights. This will be the last year of that six-year contract he signed when he originally joined the team. And there is some speculation. Will he sign a long-term deal here in Vegas? After the season is up, would he sign a bridge deal, kind of a one-year, two-year situation? Would he go somewhere else? But for someone who's the heart and soul of the Vegas Golden Knights, someone who I say is the greatest player in Golden Knights history up to this point, uh, what do you think about the John from Marcheseau situation? The fact that, yes, this is the last year on his current contract he signed in Vegas back in 2018. I kind of look at it like this, Ian. When you look at these these joggernauts, these teams that have had uh, won multiple championships, they've all been really good about keeping the core players who've brought them to the dance, as you would say. And so I would, I, I would think that the Vegas Knights, again, the way that they've approached building this hockey team has been very strategic and very intelligent. And I would imagine that they'll continue to act intelligently your heart and soul of your team, the way that you're able to win multiple championships as some of these dynasties, that was the word that I was really looking for. When you look at these dynasties, uh, Ian, dynasties don't let heart and soul players leave their, uh, their teams. They know how important their contributions are, how it's not even so much about how they play hockey, although, of course, you want your heart and soul players to be elite athletes but it's just the approach, the leadership that they bring and the way that the other players look up to them. I would say that it would be extremely important to do everything you could uh, to maintain players like that. That's how you build dynasties. And I, I feel like the Vegas Golden Knights are on the, on the cusp of really building a dynasty. When you look again at their success and already having a Stanley cup, if yeah, they're, their pursuit of a dynasty is going to be contingent on locking down these players with long-term contracts, in my opinion. And since we have about one minute left here on the show on Vegas Hockey Hub, my final question to you and everyone watching all around the world is NHL dynasties, everyone loves them, regardless if it was the Avalanche and Red Wings back in the 90s and 2000s. You had the Blackhawks and the Kings in the 2010s. Tampa Bay Lightning just did a back-to-back -back in the beginning of this decade. But winning one championship, that's good. But winning two, that makes you special. So with the Vegas Golden Knights, and we have about a minute left, how, how, what's your likelihood, what percentage would you give our Vegas Golden Knights on repeating and going back-to-back -back here in the NHL? I feel like they have an excellent opportunity. Health is always an issue being really healthy the season after you win a championship. But in terms of having all the pieces in place to be a, a repeat champion, I think all systems are go. Um, but health, I mean, that's always something to watch because health is uh, means a lot when your ability to be able to uh, perform at the level that you might have performed last season. But in terms of just the culture, they're ready to go. I really do believe that. 
And that would be great. And I would happy to see them go back to back. I would love that. Now we have about half a minute. So Guy Dawson, appreciate you coming on the show. Tell everyone about your social medias and where they can find you. Oh, wow. Well, you can follow, of course, PR Connections on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and uh, LinkedIn. We we stream all over the world. We've got about 14 shows here at the network, and our network is growing. Um, yeah, I mean, you could find me. Just Google me. <laughs> I'm in a public relations and marketing business called Classic Communications. You can go to classiccommunications.net to learn more about how we can help you uh, with uh, things related to your business or organization. And yeah, just Google Guy Dawson, I would say. Absolutely. Definitely go do that and follow the show at Vegas Hockey Hub and the network at PR Connections Radio. Until next time, have a good one. Thanks again, Ian.